Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. I never expected my great aunt to recommend a metal singer. I come from a small town, I grew up on an orchard, and yes, I even drove a tractor. But then I started looking into this singer more, Dan Vask, and he has quite the set of accolades. Plus, a bunch of our Metalhead subscribers also started recommending him. So, I feel like something just must be up, and I am going to take Great Aunt Sharon's advice. Let's get to it. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I'm found Was blind But now I see This is actually a very raw track. Yes, there's some reverb on it. But having produced a lot of different vocals for lots of different peoples and lots of different styles, I can hear when the intonation is like just a tiny bit high or a tiny bit low, like very, very small amounts. And I know that a lot of other people would have said like, oh, I'm going to make that perfect. And it doesn't sound like he's done anything to it. That's really nice. The vibrato and the expression in it also feels fairly raw. So I don't feel like We've had much messing with this. So when I take that into account and I, I take a step back, I think like, wow, dang, that was all acapella. His intonation was fantastic. I loved the subtle expression, subtle aggression even in this. I think that's fantastic. You can hear that this is a voice that sings metal, but is singing Amazing Grace, which is kind of like already in my brain. I'm going to go back to the beginning. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Just, I gotta mention, like, the posture he has is really, really good for singing. I like the way his shoulders are back and down and rested. Sometimes we'll talk about, like, if you have uh, 12 o'clock up here or 6 o'clock down here, and we'll talk about shoulders almost like as a as if they were a clock and you might go 12 o'clock and three o'clock and then just slightly back, like down a little resting would be four o'clock. That's often a way that will help kids find nice singing posture in choir, but that can often feel a little bit too tense for adults. That's mostly to help squirmy kids, <laughs> essentially. His shoulder position and the expansion across his collarbones and chest is beautiful. I don't think it's pulling back too much. It's just there to be free and open and available to support his voice. Excellent posture. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. The same the wretch like me. This is a super small, subtle detail, but it is actually good for the larynx to naturally raise just a little bit as you go higher. And you can see his Adam's apple go up slightly there. You can tell he's actually singing. Like you see it shift right there. One more time. A wretch like me. But at the same time, I see a very nice neutral job position. It doesn't look like it's locked at all. There's just a lot of really beautiful things technically about his singing that are happening. A wretch like me. I once <laughs> was lost. I like the way we've got like that kind of slight creak growl into this that makes it just that metal edge. <laughs> I once was lost, but now I'm 
was blind, but now I see. This beautiful intonation. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did the I think there's so much in common between metal and classical music. And I hear so much overlapping in classical technique and his technique here. There's a loft in the sound that I will often associate with a classical singer, but then you have a little bit more bite in it that feels a little bit more metal. Although, to be fair, there are plenty of classical singers that will go, I'll get the sound here, right? And really trying to get some extra focus on the sound. They just won't tend to have that sort of growl grit, uh, but they might still go for some focus, maybe just not as much snarl. <laughs> he has a lot of loft. It sounds like he has access to more snarl and he's got really beautiful breath control. The vibrato also is very controlled. It's like, it's a marriage of the two worlds. Lovely. Let's go back one more time. My right? There's some depth in that tone and that loft that makes it feel more classical right there. How precious did the great also notice right there, I'm pretty sure that this take is the take Sometimes when you're watching a singer like this, they will have done multiple takes. Um, and it's possible that some of them are comped together, meaning that they sort of like cut and spice them together. Uh, but check out the vibrato. Oh, go back a little bit. So you can tell when the, the you see the little vibrato moment there? Uh, that vertical bobbing is actually the name for that. <laughs> vertical bobbing that happens with vibrato. Um, that's happening at the same rate that we hear. So it looks like this is the same take. How precious did wow. <laughs> it's very controlled. point out one thing about that. So he's been keeping a fairly neutral mouth here. It's got a, I say fairly neutral. This is in the realm of how wide and extravagant the mouth can go with enunciation. It's been fairly neutral, but on E vowels, a lot of times you'll see metal singers go E or contemporary, especially they'll go really far out to the side E. And in this case, He's keeping it fairly neutral. The tongue position is a large part of why we hear that E vowel so, so pure, but that slightly more rounded neutral lip position actually is often used with a classical E vowel to give it a little bit more depth to the sound. First expect that. There was a little piece of me that was like, wait, really? Is he going to go all the way up with that? All the way up with it. Wow. And that's also a very clear tone up there. Huh. One more time. Wow. 
Now, when we're talking about that, like, I'll call it the classical contemporary continuum. Um, classical tends to have more aloft. Contemporary tends to be more forward, more. Uh, sometimes people actually just call it forward singing, um, though both have elements of each. And metal, I think, actually hangs out a little closer to classical a lot of times. But then again, it also depends on the subgenre of metal, um, right? If we go like screamer kind of metal, that's sort of a whole nother direction. I don't even know if it sits on that continuum as much. In his case, he went with this jump up, he went more towards a contemporary styling. It's actually more forward. It has a little bit less of that uh, depth and space, and it's more narrow. So an operatic tenor will often kind of bring in some more weight to that sound, and it becomes actually very, very difficult to bring that sound hefted up really far. It's very, very powerful, but it's also very taxing. You have to have really good technique to do that. In his case, he has really good technique, but what he's done is um, made it slender. So it's actually a little bit easier to go up into this space. Uh, it also isn't gonna bring in as much of a heavy vibrato, likely at this point, there'll still be some, but he's able to maintain it uh, in a straight tone a lot more. And I would say just more like laser it forward. Let's go back again. Good work with the weight of the sound. Beautiful vowels. Like a little jet through a toll. <laughs> Bluesy there? This is so awesome. I love harmonicas. Oh, <laughs> and I didn't know that he, I wonder how many instruments he plays actually. I know he's, he did a lot of solo work. I think he really just did a lot of grinding to get his sound to the place where he wanted and, and be allowed to release the kind of music he wanted. I have so much respect for the artist that does that. That is, it is hard, hard work. And it seems like he really put that in. So cool to see him play the harmonica. <laughs> that note. It's like, it, it's so colorful. <laughs> That's cool. That's, I hadn't realized that was how you make vibrato. It looks like he's doing like little puffs of air or like slight, slight different movements of the airflow to make the vibrato happen. That's cool. Wow, he's, he's a lesson in different styles of singing. People should just watch this to understand how mouth shape affects the sound because holy cow, look at his teeth. Like, like it's just different. You see that? <laughs> you don't see opera singers making that kind of shape, right? That doesn't happen. Um, and that's partly because the, the lips are pulling back. That's um, also the way his tongue is positioned, jaw is positioned. It's all bringing the sound more forward in this way, adding more snarl as well to it. And an opera singer would be thinking, oh, I wanna get like more length out of my entire vocal track. So they would be rounding their lips more. 
And you might get a little more ah, up there a little bit, but you'd still have some rounding and think of like an inner smile essentially is where we go. Uh, this is so cool. There's so many awesome things here. Okay, we're gonna do this. I'm gonna talk about some more things. Let's go back. So he's also taken a lot more weight into the sound. Going back to that, what I was discussing about leaner sound versus heavier, he's taken more weight. Um, this means that he's also just using a ton more breath pressure. He's louder. Breath pressure is going to, more breath pressure will usually mean that it's louder as well. So there's a lot more resistance that's happening here. There's necessarily going to probably be more vibrato. Not always but most of the time he'll be more vibrato because there's a lot more breath pressure that's being held back and there's periodic release from those muscles um, sort of in response to that extra breath pressure. That's often how we get vibrato developed over time is by finding balance in that area. Anyhow, that's a whole other discussion. You can hear the additional weight. You can hear more vibrato. Again, that's more classical, but suddenly this mouth shape here is what's making it so metal. That and the addition of another sound source is what makes that metal. That grit there, I don't think that's made by his true vocal folds because that would be very dangerous otherwise and would rip them apart, uh, <laughs> potentially. So uh, when you want grit like that, it's not something that you want to be making in your true vocal folds. You want it to be a different source in here, meaning um, there's some other fleshy bit that comes together and goes wacka, wacka, wacka and creates this distortion on top. That could be area epiglottic folds. It could be the, the false vocal Vocal folds. That's not not what's happening in his case. Um, there's other. There's epiglottis that can get involved. There's spit that can get involved. We've seen so many different pieces of anatomy that can get involved to make that extra sound in a really healthy way. So uh, I love that we're getting a combination of. Now we have that classical technique. We have the contemporary technique, and then you also have this sort of like almost a triangle. You've got this metal, harsh vocal technique where you're engaging a different sound source. Look at this beautiful diphthong. Where is it? It's such grace. So, right, a diphthong is the combination of two vowels into one sound. So, grace, the vowel in that A, is a, com a combination of an E and an E, A. And you see his mouth really clearly go to both of those vowel positions. And you hear how that sound shifts there. It's really important as a singer, especially with something elongated like this, to know exactly when the switch of those vowels is going to occur. And compare it to amaze. So the A of amazing, and grace, that's actually the same diphthong, but he chooses to switch the vowels in the first one much later versus grace he does about halfway through. It's like 50-50 and the first one is more like 90-10 split. Do you see how he goes so late to that one? One more time. And that one's 50-50.
Dang. That was a good breath. That was a really solid breath. He carried over. Dang. the way he brought it back. So he dialed back the distortion, had a very short breath between those phrases, and uh, really brought it back to a more slender, cleaner sound that works beautifully with the phrasing. I've come to really appreciate distortion as a way to go even further with the power and emotion of a sound. It makes me want to have somebody sing Visi Darte right? And add a little bit of distortion on the absolute highest, most emotional moment. There's actually a couple different moments where it would work in that. I'd be fascinated to hear how that could play into an operatic sound just to make it feel like the heart was being torn apart even more. Anyway, I'm curious. Let's go back. And there's that carry through that's incredible. Brings it back here. Excellent. Excellent focus on the sound. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I'm, I'm really, I'm nerding out about his tongue. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> this is usually an E tongue. The bottom of the tongue is going to be against the back of your bottom teeth. And then uh, the back of the tongue, it arches up really, really far. And it kind of does this. He actually has retracted his tongue, which I have seen a few times with operatic tenors that were quite good. Um, Cause I mean, we, we take a look at the grades often and we'll literally study their mouths. Um, this is not something you see Pavarotti do, right? Um, but I've seen this live and thought, oh my goodness, how does that help the sound? Like that, it confuses me to be really honest because that means that the base of the tongue is gonna be retracting and pushing down on the larynx. However, it's possible that it's useful just for the top notes. I know that if it, you get into habit with using the root of the tongue all the time to help stabilize the larynx, that that can be a big problem. Um, but his sound is incredible. I've only seen him do it at this point. I'm so intrigued. <laughs> See, the tongue is in a very, the tip is at the bottom, uh, back, bottom teeth. Look at it retract! Look at it retract! And then the jaw even gets involved in that in that vibrato. Okay, one more time. Yeah. One more time. <laughs> Once blind, but now I see. <laughs> <laughs> I like that in <laughs> That was a really good, good last phrase there. I like the way it surprised me and then it was just really, really long. There's so many different ways he's showing off vocally in this. It's very, very impressive. Once blind, but now I see. <laughs>
leave it to great aunts and you to be correct. Wow, that was a truly astonishing vocal performance. I loved the demonstration of so many excellent different kinds of technique. I'm really into that. I like nerding out about that. And if you want to see me nerd out about that a ton, you can check out this playlist over here. May you fall more in love with music every day.